Hi, it's Kevin Sharp. Today we are joined by writer Christopher Cantwell of the Star Trek crossover series Day of Blood, running in Star Trek and Star Trek Defiant. Chris, welcome to Comic Art Live, and tell us about what page you chose. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, I chose a page from Spider-Man vs. Wolverine, number one. So it was a one-shot issue that came out in uh, 1987. And so, tell uh, first off, where would you have been in your comic collecting and reading life when you first found this issue? Was it off the stands fresh, or did you find it as a back issue? So for me, it was a back issue for sure. I mean, I think I was um, I was a Spider-Man fan first and foremost, and the first uh, issue I got of anything, any comic book, was, was Spider-Man. It was actually a Marvel Tales issue while I was on a camping trip with my dad. So um, I've always been a massive Spider-Man fan. Um, but recently, I was going back and reading uh, some of the kind of, uh, I guess, mid to late 80s run, um, which is like Peter in the black costume post, post Secret Wars, but before, you know, the costume, you know, becomes revealed to be or is revealed to be like an alien, you know, and becomes Venom and everything we know about that. So it's mostly just like this kind of darker period of... Um, Peter's life that I thought was really fascinating because it's all it's all the stuff about Ned Leeds and Hobgoblin and a lot of that. So um, I just thought it was riveting stuff. I read the whole volume, and in there was uh, in in this collected volume of the those issues is this one shot issue, which is Spider Man versus Wolverine. Um, clearly, like the title meant to like get people to just buy it, even if they're not reading the main book. Um, you know, Peter's not in the black costume in this. The explanation for why is fantastic. Uh, obviously, they wanted him in his iconic uh, red and blue, but he's in—he's overseas. I think it's—I think he's in Europe with Wolverine, or when he encounters him, and he ends up because he doesn't have his costume momentarily. I think he buys a Spider-Man costume at a costume shop, and so that's just the excuse for them to be able to draw him in red and blue for the rest of the issue. Uh, but yeah, this specific issue was really fascinating to me because it it. it it deals with that kind of, from you know, comic book fans and Spider-Man fans, that cardinal Marvel rule of Spider-Man doesn't kill people. Um, and this is one of the first times he kills someone. Um, and it's really, it's like a one-on-one -on -one kills someone with his bare hands. And it was a, a really riveting story. And uh, it had a lot of lasting effect for the character and the issues that followed um, that I also loved. So, so yeah. So how did you, when you're reading this book, and, and as we prepared to talk today, how did you choose this particular page out of that book? Well, it's this page that, I mean, I think that this, being such a huge Spider-Man fan, I think that what's interesting about that Spider-Man doesn't kill people rule is that it comes from, it's not, some people might dismiss it as like a, a corporate rule, but it, it really is rooted in the character because for me, Spider-Man and Peter are very much this paragon of grief uh, just, you know, because the character's origin is rooted in, in death and the death of a loved one, and then kind of reiterated in the death of Gwen Stacy um, and even her dad uh, that it, it just, it's very much part of who he is dramatically. And so this page is fantastic because well, one, I mean, it's that great, like late eighties art, um, you know, it's, it's Spider-Man and Wolverine, two i think marvel heroes who are huh, historically like small <laughs> they're smaller guys um wolverine has this amazing low center of gravity like you, you just get the feeling that wolverine is just made of kind of cement and indestructible peter is also very molecularly dense you get that sense too but he's also wiry he's also buoyant i mean he's funny he's these things so it's like pitting these two guys against each other who are very similar but then um, also quite different in terms of how they approach this fundamental thing of killing. Like Wolverine was built to be a killing machine. And Peter, it's very much the antithesis of that. What I love about the art on this page is, is this page is when they really first have their first physical confrontation. And Peter says, I think he says, he's like, I'm, I'm giving him everything I've got. And he just keeps coming. And he's like, do I have to kill this guy? Like, and he puts his... He puts his hands around Wolverine's neck, and the first thing Wolverine does, the bottom three panels are the my favorite of the page, because the first thing Wolverine does is smile, because he knows enough about Spider-Man, or he just gets a sense of this guy, that this guy is not a killer, and he knows, and he kind of nails Peter with his dialogue here, and knows that 
he doesn't have it in him to squeeze. Um, and what's amazing is he has all the lines uh, in the final panel, which he's like, and he, he, he basically proves that he can kill Spider-Man without even thinking about it. And Peter doesn't answer. And what you get is a classic example of Spider-Man eye acting, which I love. I love Spider-Man eye acting. And I think that it's done to such great effect so often. But here it's so nice because it is the eye acting on Peter's mask answers everything that Wolverine is saying. And it, it, it proves that Wolverine is right in the moment. You see that the eyes have gone helpless in this way where he has to hand it to Wolverine. Like it, it, he's capitulating. Like it, and it's, it's an amazing moment because it's just a subtle shift. It's really the angles of the eyes from panel. Oh, let's see if there's five on the page. So this panel four goes from, uh, you know, they're angled uh, upward a little bit, right? Because he's in this like kind of death grip and then they just drop. So they just, they just drop the angle of the eyes. And that means Peter has lost, right? And it's not just that he's lost the fight. He's lost the argument. And I think that's what's always great about Marvel is when the characters both have valid points of view and one proves the other wrong uh, just on a character level. Um, and I just love that. I think it's it just like it, it's Wolverine just has Peter's number immediately. And it delineates these two characters so well, you know, kind of indelibly. Like, and I think it, it, it takes the title of the, the one shot Spider-Man versus Wolverine to another level where it says these are two these are two different perspectives to heroing, right? You have Spider-Man's and then you have Wolverine's. Their mission statements are very different and, and here they're at odds. Um, and, and I just, I just love it. And so you had mentioned that there's a kind of an answer or a, a button on this, on the following page. Would you like to tell um, the viewers what, what the payoff yeah, so for is you the is? Panel, this is the Spider-Man panel that haunts me the most. I think just as a like reader, is so it, it's i don't want to get too much into that like comic book plot of it but like um wolverine there's like a i feel like an ex-lover of wolverine's involved in this story um and she's kind of like seeking like basically what you realize is she's seeking the end of her life um or just kind of a relief and so she's she's it's almost like a, a suicide pact she's making with herself and she uses the kind of growing rivalry um an intensity between Spider-Man and Wolverine in terms of how they're approaching this situation, um, like for her own agenda. So she actually sneaks up on Peter in the subsequent page and he thinks it's Wolverine and he thinks he can hit Wolverine with everything he has with all of his spider strength. And he turns around in this final panel of this page and delivers. It's, it's like the, all it is is a turn and punch, but it shows how strong Spider-Man is because he kills this person instantly with this hit. And um, again, like I, he thinks it's Wolverine. So again, it's mistaken identity. He's, he thinks he's hitting a guy who could absorb a hit like this, but he's hitting a defenseless person and like a, a normal human and killing them. And what is kind of terrifying about it to me is that um, it's like, the eye acting again, I think is something I wanted to draw attention to because Spider-Man's eye acting in this final panel is very dead eyed. It's very almost kind of reptilian. You know, it's almost like a shark whose eyes roll back white where the, the eye line, I don't know how intentional this was, but the eye line even seems a little unfocused. He's more just focused on the hit and, and the action than the person, which is obviously where, you know, Peter, I think can get into trouble you know, throughout his story, you know, career. And I, I, this is obviously a moment where that happens, where he, he kills this woman. It's what she wanted. Um, and it is a mistaken identity thing, but it, I think is, it might be the first he's killed people in the past, but again, it's more like this person died on a giant vehicle or something like that. And he <laughs> let them fall. Out. But this is like with his bare hand, he punches someone to death. And this panel um, this specific panel comes back to haunt him repeatedly in the amazing Spider-Man run um, as it progresses and his mental state kind of unravels. And they repeat this panel in a really wonderful way, wonderful in a kind of scary way where like you start to see it in a kind of mo monochromatic red um, flashback where Peter in these quiet moments in his normal life 
is remembering killing this person. And in a way, her death kind of gets tied to Uncle Ben and Gwen. It's a much lesser uh, note in that whole melody piece, but like it is one where here's another death that he feels guilty over and he is 100% complicit in, right? He always is, he obviously blames himself for Uncle Ben. He, there's always the, the blame around Gwen's death, you know, uh, you know, because it, it, the webbing does the, what snaps her neck, but obviously the goblin knocked her over in the first place. All of that can, you can, he can ruminate on that forever. But this one is, it's another, it's another conundrum for him of grief. Um, and I think it's really brilliant because they kind of just snuck it into this one shot. It's kind of, it, it, it's built as a wrestling match between two fan favorites. And then you get this profound character moment that hits the, hits the elegiac chord of Peter Parker at his very core. And it effectively haunts him in a serial manner through the main title for a while. And they get a lot of juice out of it to great effect. And, and again, it's, it's that eye acting from like, you know, that, that fourth panel to the fifth panel of helplessness to this kind of dead eyed killer um is is interesting like he's very he's very much like wolverine in this last panel he's playing wolverine's game um and it's it's a game he can't handle and and it's proven that he can't handle it as the story continues in the main book great well for the record we should acknowledge um mark bright and al williamson as the art team on this special yes and as a final question before we get out the door do you own any original spider-man art no, I would, that would be incredible, but absolutely not. <laughs> that would be the coolest thing. Um, but yeah, I, I I would go after this page. Uh, but I I you know what it it it, it actually it freaks me out even now to 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 look at this issue in some ways just because uh, I don't know it's just it it really it really pokes at Spider Man as a character in a in a delicious way. Well, viewers, anybody who has a lead on pages from this special, you now know who's a potential customer. So, Chris, thank you again for joining us and talking about Spider-Man versus Wolverine. Thank you.